Thinking about intercultural relations and the media, I was reminded last night of a story told by Oberlin Waugh, the uh, British columnist who wrote for The Spectator. Uh, he was on the lecture circuit, and one afternoon he received a phone call from Nigeria asking him, would he, could he come there and give a talk? He said, sure, yeah, what's, what's the subject? Breast feeding was the subject. Uh, he said, hmm, are you sure I'm the right person to give this talk? They said, certainly you are. Uh, and okay, they made their uh, arrangements. He had a couple of months to prepare his talk. Uh, he arrived at the meeting in Lagos and uh, in suitable illustrations for his talk. Uh, he was 10 minutes into it when he realized the faces uh, uh, at the meeting were falling and were very confused. And he plowed on and completed his 20, 25 minute talk. Uh, to realize uh, that the, president, the chairman next door to him said, well, actually, we asked you to talk about press freedom. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> there was a certain hilarity. Uh, Maybe that's what our prime minister meant. <laughs> <laughs> now, Russia and I have been working, as, as, uh, as Andrew said, uh, on this subject. Uh, I'm going to summarize some of the um, uh, media mapping uh, experiences that we've had very briefly, some of the good practices that, uh, that we've, uh, we've seen, and some of the action plans that we have that, that, that we're thinking about from a northern perspective and looking at the issue of particularly of intercultural relations. Um, now, we don't have to reinvent uh, our experience. Uh, we've had uh, an experience over the, since 2005 in the Euromed region of exchanging uh, networks of journalists. Uh, um, uh, and within the context of a basic orientation uh, towards journalism as part of civil society, two striking phrases were used uh, at this meeting, that freedom of expression is the greatest gift of the revolution. I think this was from a Tunisian uh, uh, participant. And from Hani Shukrala said that journalism oversaw the birth of democracy. Now, these are big statements, big, and they're correct. And I think they've reanimated, certainly my view, and I hope uh, our view, of what journalism is all about. It's about public goods, about the public interest, uh, about civil society. It's not the possession, if you like, just of journalists. It's the possession of wider, much wider citizenship standards. This question of standards, ethics... Uh, where was brought out very uh, vividly by Aidan White in his talk. He summarized standards in terms of telling the truth, being independent, being impartial, being humane, and uh, practicing good governance. That's a good checklist. And the spirit of the meeting we've had has been on a peer-to-peer -peer basis of equality, which is a, a wonderful experience. And I think there's been if you like, a convergence of experience out of the crisis and out of the uh, transformations uh, that we can all learn from. Now, I want to look just back at the last couple, few years of the networking working experience. There was a meeting in the Dead Sea in Jordan uh, in 2005, bringing together 100-plus journalists and media practitioners, uh, and this was brought together by the European Commission. Uh, they had a very a, a lively two or three day ex exchange of views um, and the decision was taken to continue that process. Uh, a number of meetings were held over the next couple of years and from this there emerged a structure of dialogue uh, on a peer-to-peer -peer basis with a whole series of meetings um, uh, um, uh, uh, with a very interesting set of agendas on networking and dialogue, on sharing experience, on the visibility of the Euromed process, on training, exchanges and scholarships on intercultural understandings and relations, on gender equality, on xenophobia and racism in the media, on terrorism uh, and how to report it, for example. Um, and there was also uh, and so hundreds of journalists, five or six hundred journalists were involved in this over, over those years in various meetings. And a lot of experience uh, was accumulated as to how to organize these meetings, how to focus them, how to have an input to policy making, for example, uh, from a discussion in Dublin about reporting terrorism. Uh, 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 we had an input to a ministerial meetings of the, uh, of the, uh, of the Euromed uh, process. 
Similarly, an input from a discussion in Vienna about intercultural relations. Similarly, from a, a meeting in Marrakesh about media freedoms uh, held in 2010, which anticipated uncannily many of the problems that we've talked about today and that have been faced during the revolutions. Um, in 2008, this initiative of dialogue and interaction and networking was joined to an initiative under the European Neighbourhood Journalism Network of training. Uh, and there's some very, very interesting experience of, tr of training uh, on a swap and active rep rep reporting basis, uh, and, and not just um, uh, for mid-career journalists and not just for, uh, for, for people about to enter the profession. And this work continued until 2011, regrettably, the um, uh, networking side of it, uh, the budget ran out just as the revolutions began to happen. Uh, the training uh, side of it went on a little bit longer. Uh, but we have to remember those lessons uh, and bring them together. Uh, and remember the work that was done in this network with Anna Lindt, uh, in terms of expertise and in terms of good practice, with the Alliance for Civilizations, uh, with IEMED, with PANOS, with Eurobarometer, and several other organizations. I haven't time to uh, explain them all in detail here. Um, uh, a group of us in from that network have got together, uh, tentatively calling ourselves a Euromed media network, to try and revive this in the spirit of, of, of what was learned in those days. And I want just to um, suggest that there are three major lines of, of, of action that we need to think about coming from this meeting and coming from our previous experience. Um, we need to think, as Andrew said, politically about this. Uh, Naomi gave us the advice that the way to understand the changes that we're living through is to ask what's going on politically in them. I think I would certainly agree with that. And we have an opportunity as media... Uh, to have an input to policy making and to make certain demands uh, on, 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 uh, on parliaments, on governments and on the Euromed process as it meets. And we shouldn't be shy about that uh, if, 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 if it's true that the media is as central to societal and political change as, uh, as has been uh, argued and, and, and presented at this meeting. Now it seems to me that there are three major areas that we need to concentrate on, looking at from my perspective. First is the value of networking. Uh, of, of, and the need, if you're going to do networking, you need organization, you need continuity, you need funding, you need support, and you need professional help. And we have to go and, and get the expertise for that so that we're not just meeting on a once-off, rather fragmented basis, but we're actually learning the lessons as we go along. Secondly, we need to take seriously the research dimension of this networking. We've heard, uh, looking at the good practices over the last number of years, there's really valuable cooperation gone on between practicing journalists and people doing research, both academics, policy people, people doing research into networking, into intercultural dialogue, and so on. Um, uh, people, therefore, who can uh, advise us as practicing media in monitoring the commitments that we make about standards, in tracking the kinds of coverage we, we give, in having a feedback mechanism which, from which we can actually learn uh, by way of observatories, by way of contacts, or whatever way you know, it is that we, we want to do this. So that's a second area that I, I think is terribly important, and it's related in the research dimension to the need for journalists to be aware that there are great pools of expertise in, in academic research and policy research, we need to link up and create bridges between, the, uh, between the, 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 that expertise and the, way, and, and the journalists who are, who, who are doing the work on the north and south shores of the Mediterranean. And the third dimension is the ethical dimension, the standards dimension that's come up right through our discussion. Uh, that can be very much part of the network. It can be part of the solidarity, again, that Aidan White referred to, a solidarity within media between 
uh, working journalists, between editors, between proprietors. There actually is a professionalism that we can share uh, in this area. And we can extend it and should be willing to extend it to the blogosphere, to the new social media, the online. This is not a non-ethical area on the very contrary. Uh, and Aidan also made a distinction between uh, elementary communication, social communication that's going on there, and real journalism which has to apply ethical standards and society expects that of us. So, um, um, uh, in, in conclusion, I would say that uh, we were warned by Hani Shakrula about a certain infantile Orientalism coming from, if you like, from the north. There's perhaps an equivalent infantile Occidentalism coming from the south in the sense that we talk big generalizations about the Western media. I don't think there's any such thing. Uh, just as I don't think, uh, one of the things, what we've learned from the Northern perspective is that an infantile uh, Orientalism uh, mistakes uh, a singular South uh, for the, what of course is the highly diverse and multiple South that we, we, we should know about. So I'll leave you thinking about those two other great subjects, press feeding and breast freedom. Thank you.